Well, hello, y'all. I'm back. This is the solar generator that I built. And this is the back side. It'll be a hand truck that this rests on, which will be required because this thing weighed in at 91 pounds. This is the front side. We'll do a little tour of it. First, we'll turn it on. We have a monitor here that monitors it through an internal shunt, which I'll show you. We have classic 12 volt cigarette lighter adapter and a couple of USB ports for charging devices. And that can be turned off and on. It has a thousand watt pure sine wave inverter you can turn on here. And it has four outlets, as well as a remote, which I don't see much need it for, and another USB charging port. You can turn the light, the screen on top, on and off. It has a 60 amp solar charge controller, so you can charge with uh, solar panels up to about 780 watts, depending on how it's configured. Inside also has a little light for working on it. The battery is a it's a, these are four 302 amp hour cattle lithium iron phosphate cells. And they tested at 308 to 314 amp hours, uh, depending on which one. I have restrained them without compression. They compress themselves when they're at full charge. They compress themselves a little bit. I don't want to have too much compression on them, but I also don't want them moving and putting strain on these terminals. I did not put the, so, okay, so this is a BMS. It's an overkill solar BMS. It's a, actually a JBD BMS that's rebranded by overkill solar. And it has a Bluetooth uh, communication so I can look at it on my phone and uh, configure it which I've done and manage it on my phone. It has a shunt that controls the uh, display that's up on top that shows the state of charge. In the back there you'll see a 175 amp Anderson connector which is comes through the bottom and is flush with the bottom. That's designed for connecting this to a modular additional battery pack, which would be only about this big, would only contain four more cells and another BMS and another shunt, and would have an Anderson connector in the top of a box that would extend out enough to engage with this one so that you could set this box on top of another box which was just a cell it would have a, a cutoff switch and it would also have a fuse and that would enable you to lock this in place on top with a couple of latches and double the capacity the capacity of this one is just shy of four kilowatt hours of power and with the inverter inefficiency somewhere around three and a half kilowatt hours of power available. The battery uh, positive here 
goes first through a 150 amp ANL fuse. And that's this back here. And then I've got a spare fuse tucked in out of the way. Um, next you see this breaker. This is a 63 amp DC breaker that is uh, the first thing that happens from the solar charge controller. The solar charge controller here is on this side. And if I turn this breaker on, then the solar charge controller will power up. And it's a MPPT solar charge controller. And it has a Wi-Fi connection that's back in the back here. It also has a temperature sensor, which comes in. It can connect to solar panels with this connect connection here. And there's actually room inside the box here so that I can take the wire, or the cord for the solar array, and I can mount it on the inside of this door so that when this door closes, it's in here and that keeps it all in one place. This temperature sensor is for the cooling fan. This is a cooling fan controller. And this cooling fan controller can only work with 12 volts or less. You don't want to blow it up. So this is a, uh, a buck controller up here that takes that 13.6 volts that's currently in the battery and it turns it down to 11.3 so that it's perfectly safe for this cooling fan. And then here we have a charge, an external charger. You can plug an extension cord into this and it will power up this charger here which has an adjustable voltage on it and you can charge it from a power cord from the grid if you want. We have a positive bus and a negative bus and those take all of the different inputs like the battery, the BMS, uh, the solar charge controller and the charger and tie it all together. I have a fuse panel here that controls the outlets, the interior light, the fan, the shunt, and the exterior lights. On the outside of the box, we have some auxiliary lights that and light up the room that it's in. They run on LED and they're just a few watts each. And then what else do you need to see? I'm not sure there's anything else. That's about it. Um, I'll take my heat gun and we'll plug it in and turn the inverter on. This uh, heat gun says it's a thousand watts. This inverter says that it is using, it says it's using 85% of its capacity, which is supposed to be a thousand watts. The shunt is saying that we are using 974 watts, 972 watts. I want to get right side up, I'm sorry. 
972 watts, 72.7 amps currently. And it is, the shunt is logging the amp hours that are running through it since the full charge. And it will eventually arrive at a capacity through multiple iterations of charging and discharging and will eventually be able to give you an accurate state of charge. The cooling fan, if I take the heat gun and put it up in there, it is set to come on. You can see the, this, temp, this is the temperature in Celsius. It's set to come on at 34 C and go back off at 30 C. So we'll just go ahead and run a little heat in there. And then I'll show you how long it takes to cool it off and also how quiet this fan is. This is a very quiet cooling fan. down to thirty-two. It's down to. It's cooling it down rather quickly, and at thirty, it will shut off. That cooling fan exhausts its air through this hole, which basically cool, also cools off the solar charge controller while it's cooling off the box. Now this solar charge controller is going to put heat into the box, but the sensor is right next to it, right above it. So it will turn that fan on as soon as it needs to. And that way um, it will, the fan will cool the box and also the solar charge controller. It was a design decision I made. I'm not sure if it was the best decision, but it was the decision I made. I guess the last thing I'll show you before I sign off on this video is that I did not want to, this, this, these are the sensing leads, the balance leads or uh, sensing leads for the BMS. And I don't like the idea of putting these sensing leads on the same terminal as the battery. I want this batteries, these batteries to, um, that I'm building to have a nice solid connection with the right torque value. So what I've done is I've taken a drill and tap and I've tapped into the bus bar to use a screw with a split ring washer to tie the sensing leads. And I even did that on the um, battery negative and the battery positive. I just added a little half a bus bar so that all of my terminals can be tightened down correctly and not have that little ring terminal in there getting in the way. Well, that's it. And uh, thanks for hanging with me on this video. This uh, I'll show you another video later when we get the solar panels hooked up to it. And also when I get the modular uh, additional capacity box built and added on. I've ordered a, a nice heavier capacity hand truck, this tiny little fold away device moves this around, but it's a little wimpy and it's also too short for a tall guy like me. So I'm getting a real hand truck to mount this to in a more permanent way. And that's about it. 
Thanks so much, y'all. Uh, yeah, I'm supposed to tell you to like and subscribe and all that. I hate to do that, but uh, it would help a lot if you would uh, go ahead and hit the subscribe button. And I'll see you on the next video. Bye-bye.